Hey guys, and it's time to do a hands-on comparison of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And yes, 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 I know the iPhone 12 will be the real competitor. But let's see how the current iPhone 11 Pro Max stacks up against the Note 20 Ultra. In case you don't know, the 11 Pro Max still is a thousand plus dollar phone. So it is important to see how it compares to the best of Samsung. But before I begin, I'm launching a mega Galaxy Buds giveaway. So I'm giving away three Galaxy Buds Live along with one Galaxy Galaxy Buds Plus. To enter this giveaway, be sure to follow the rules in the description. So first up, design-wise, the Note 20 Ultra, especially the bronze color, it has a lot of similarities with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Apple did the rings around the camera thing first, as well as the color-coordinated camera bump, so it does kind of seem like Samsung may have been inspired. But I have to say, Samsung has done a really, really good job across all the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra models. Samsung has always bested Apple when it comes to the front design, front display display design of the phone, but it always kind of felt that Apple did a better back design with more attention to detail, especially with the matte finish and stainless steel around the sides. It was more apparent when I compared it to the S20 Ultra, it had sort of a boring design as far as the colors are concerned, but when it comes to the Note 20 Ultra, things are completely changed. Samsung has brought its absolute A plus design. We have Gorilla Glass 7 going on back and front. If you don't like glossy versions, sure, you can have the bronze color that finally comes with a matte finish and it looks super, super badass. The color coordinated rings and the camera bump, it adds all to that beauty. As far as the size comparison of the camera bump, of course, the Note 20 Ultra is having a bigger bump thanks to the larger camera sensor coming at 108 megapixel resolution along with a 50x periscope zoom lens and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. The camera bump on the iPhone isn't big at all. It's still using a smaller sensor, no periscope zoom so only 2x optical zoom plus an ultra wide angle lens i'm going to be doing the camera test soon but it's pretty obvious that the note 20 ultra gives you a lot more options especially for the zoom both phones can shoot 4k 60 fps video using both front and back cameras but note 20 ultra can take this one step forward and record videos at 8k video resolution thanks to its big 108 megapixel sensor so you end up getting more detail in your videos both phones have ip68 water and dust resistant rating uh, but the Note 20 Ultra can do something what the iPhone 11 Pro Max cannot do and that is reverse wireless charging. It can definitely come handy if you want to charge your devices such as your earbuds or your smartwatch, uh, something I'm really looking forward to see on the upcoming iPhone 12 lineup. When it comes to the display, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has a 6.5 inch screen, so it is uh, noticeably smaller. I mean, it's still a large phone, but it is a smaller device compared to the Note 20 Ultra. It is still rocking a notch and a 60 hertz refresh rate. The Ultra, on the other hand, has a 120 hertz refresh rate and of course a 6.9 inch display. It's a lot more bezel-less, punch hole design, much, much better than the notch. I think everyone can agree that notch at this point is very very outdated. The Note 20 Ultra rocks a in-display fingerprint scanner that is a 3D one whereas the iPhone rocks a face ID. Now it's hard to show the difference between the 120Hz and 60Hz but I can definitely tell that Note 20 Ultra is really really smooth. Apple is not even bringing 120Hz on the iPhone 12 as per latest leaks so it seems like Note 20 Ultra is gonna be an even more dominating position. As for the software, iOS 14 on the iPhone 11 Pro Max Android 10 One UI 2.5 on the Note 20 Ultra. iOS 14 brings a lot of changes to the table, although it took a lot from Android like the widgets and its picture-in-picture -picture mode. Still, Apple's widgets implementation is really, really good. One UI, on the other hand, is not only colorful like iOS, but it also offers a lot more customization. Samsung has added features like wireless decks, which allows you to wirelessly share your screen on a smart TV without any cables, which is really, really good. You can literally transform your phone into a laptop. For the first time, Samsung also brought a proper competitor to the AirDrop thanks to the UWB technology for faster file sharing. It is only specific to the Note 20 Ultra, something Apple has utilized for years. It's finally available on Samsung as well. iOS may be boring for some people, but the longer software updates is definitely a strong point compared to the two-year software support of the Note 20 Ultra. Now, like all Galaxy Note phones, the Note 20 Ultra has one thing that no other phone has and that is a flagship quality S Pen. 
The S Pen has gotten even better with only 9 millisecond delay. It's almost like writing on a paper. The S Pen allows you to do a lot of trickery. You can use it to take pictures, change mode, explore the UI. It's a whole new experience that you always get with a Note phone thanks to the S Pen. And again, how much does it matter to you? It will be a personal preference. The iPhone 11 Pro Max does not offer a stylus. When it comes to the battery, the iPhone rocks a near 4,000 million per cell. The Note 20 Ultra, on the other hand, rocks a 45. 500 million per cell. The 11 Pro Max is still one of the best battery performers on the market, winning many battery drain tests that I've done, but the Note 20 Ultra is looking really promising, especially for a 120Hz display device. Thanks to its adaptive refresh rate technology, I feel like the Note 20 Ultra battery will be really, really good. Again, I'll be doing my battery drain test soon. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for the full coverage. The Note 20 Ultra also sports 45 watts of fast charging uh, versus the 18 watt charging on the iPhone iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, under the hood, this is where Apple excels. The A13 chip inside the iPhone 11 Pro Max is still stronger than both Exynos 990 and the A65 Plus. Of course, I'm talking purely about the benchmarks. Real life performance will be almost identical on all the phones, with a few differences with thermals and efficiency. But uh, when it comes to the numbers, Apple A13 is still ahead, and the A14 will definitely make the gap even wider. As always, the real life speed test is coming your way. I definitely suggest you to hit that subscribe button. So all in all, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is packing what was missing in the previous package. The premium looking design and the colors, it has surely surpassed Apple when it comes to its design, especially when you look at the front. Uh, display technology is next level, Gorilla Glass 7 protection. Cameras are really versatile with a lot more options. We have seen the 11 Pro Max, it still holds up really, really well against the S20 Ultra. But can it hold the same against the Note 20 Ultra? We'll find that out soon. With the first impression wise, I have to say for a 2020 flagship standard, the Note 20 Ultra is definitely offering a lot more in the total flagship package. Again, I will be going in depth in my future videos and I might do a comparison with the iPhone 12, of course, when that comes out. So again, subscribe, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What other comparisons you guys want to see, let me know. Be sure to enter my Mega Buds giveaway. All the rules are mentioned in the description. If you guys want to see a comparison to the normal Note 20, that video is up on the channel as well. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.